A rare type of solar eclipse that creates a ring of fire around the moon uh, took place uh, this morning, uh, passing over large parts of the Earth. The path of the total eclipse will pass or pass directly over 12 countries and territories. Uh, but uh, what we want to find out now is just exactly what it was and uh, you know who witnessed it. I want to talk now to uh, Professor uh, Chen, Andrew Chen, uh, from the Vids Planetarium. Professor, very good morning. Uh, uh, am I correct? Talk to us first, Professor, about what is a, uh, a solar eclipse. All right. Well, very simply, uh, the Earth goes around the sun and uh, the uh, moon goes around the Earth. And a, a solar eclipse is when the path of the moon, as it goes around the Earth, passes in front of the sun. And so the Earth finds itself in the moon's shadow. And as you look towards the sun, it, the, the light from the sun is blocked by the moon. And that's what we call a solar eclipse. Well, what did we experience today, earlier? What was special about uh, so it? So this morning, uh, what we had is a rare event. Uh, one of the interesting coincidences about uh, our moon and our sun is that the size of the moon on the sky, uh, the apparent size, uh, is about the same as the apparent size of the sun. The ratio of the distance and the, the actual physical size of, of each of them works out that way. And so uh, both the orbit of the moon and the orbit of the Earth around the sun are ellipses. So when the sun is closer to the Earth than, uh, than average, and the moon is slightly farther away from the uh, Earth than average, uh, then when the moon passes in front of the sun, it doesn't block the sun completely. It's slightly smaller than the size of the sun. So as it passes in front, uh, the edge of the, uh, the, the ring uh, of, of, uh, of the sun is not blocked. And so because uh, it's not blocked, it shines through and, and, uh, and, and appears as a ring of, of fire. And so that's what we call an annular eclipse, annulus being the Latin word for ring. And, uh, and so that is what people got to see today. How rare is this? Uh, pretty rare, uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's certainly not the first time in, in history that, it, that it's been seen. So I think it, it happens uh, 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 so, sort of uh, every uh, uh, certain number of, of, of solar eclipses. I don't have the exact number on hand, but, yep. uh, but it, it's, it's certainly something that, that's been known. Uh, it's it's not a, it's not a, a brand new event, and and the good thing is that we're able to predict when it's going to occur because we know the orbits of the moon and and the Earth uh, quite precisely. So we know exactly when the moon is going to be further away and the sun is going to be slightly closer. So we know when these are going to occur. Okay, fantastic stuff. Talk to us, uh, uh, Prof, Professor, about the winter sol solstice, which is, of course, today. Uh, I think it brings us the longest night, and in the, in the uh, Western Hemisphere, it is the short, uh, longest day. Am I correct? Uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, Seven, yes. Southern hemisphere. In, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the longest day, and so they call it the summer solstice. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's the shortest day, and so we call it the winter solstice. And uh, uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, uh, it has, it's not related to the distance between the Earth and the Sun, right? It wouldn't be the opposite in the North and South uh, uh, if that were the case. It's due to the tilts of the Earth. The, uh, the uh, axis of the Earth's rotation is tilted with respect to the Sun. And so uh, on this day, uh, the, the South Pole is pointed uh, directly away, uh, well, not directly, at a 23 angle, degree angle away from the Sun. And so uh, we have more night than day. And uh, the, uh, uh, the, North, the North Pole is pointed uh, 23 degrees towards the sun, and so they have more day than night. Uh, and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. once a year, that's when that happens. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, these occurrences are pretty significant. I mean, when you, when you look back in history, uh, you know, when I was in school, which is a long, 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 long time ago, uh, you know, many people in our history used to use these moments and these particular events, uh, you know, to, to, to map their way forward. Well, uh, it's very important, especially, uh, uh, you know, uh, when most of uh, society was working uh, agriculturally and you needed to know uh, pre precisely what the calendar was and when the seasons would occur. Uh, and especially winter, you know, is a season where you have to make sure that you've harvested properly and that you have enough uh, 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 provisions uh, until spring. And so being able to uh, uh, know these dates quite precisely uh, was very important uh, uh, throughout history, and so that's why these occasions were marked, so that people uh, would uh, would be prepared and uh, and uh, be able to mark the seasons as they as they progressed and and uh, and adjust their uh, you know and and uh, follow the the behavior that they needed to in order to to make sure that they could uh, they could survive. I want to know about the Vitz Planetarium. 
What do you guys mm -hmm. what, 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 explain that to me? Okay. Well, uh, the planetarium uh, is uh, 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 approaching or has approached its uh, its uh, 60th anniversary, and uh, it uh, um, it, it was originally proposed to be built uh, um, uh, uh, in time uh, to uh, uh, well. It, there was basically a big uh, trade expo, and uh, and uh, they wanted to be able to build a sort of portable planetarium to use for that. But uh, when they started to build it, they realized that that wasn't going to be an option. Uh, and uh, so uh, at that time, that uh, piece of land was owned by the university, but uh, the the, uh, the university hadn't uh, sort of expanded to, to fill that space yet. Uh, and uh, so uh, the, um, the Vitz was sort of involved from the beginning in the construction of that planetarium, and uh, over time, uh, the city uh, sort of ceded control of the planetarium to to Vitz. So now the planetarium is part of the School of Physics at the university, essentially, and has a long uh, and a very storied history. Um, you know, people uh, when the when the moon landings occurred, people came to the planetarium to view the the, the moon landings, and uh, of course they've uh, had regular shows for the public and for uh, for for schools for its entire existence. And so it's been a really key part of. Um, Outreach of people's education and uh, and uh, culture and uh, STEM uh, uh, awareness uh, for that time, and we're we're quite proud at the university that we're uh, playing an active role in uh, both maintaining the university, uh, the, the planetarium, and also sort of upgrading uh, uh, its content to uh, uh, include uh, through uh, special special lectures and so on the, the sort of cutting edge research that we're doing in the School of Physics and Astrophysics. So that that's uh, something that that in recent years we've been able to do much more about. Of course, now with the lockdown, uh, no, uh, we're not able to provide the shows that we normally provide, and so yeah. this is a time when uh, uh, you know we're, we're hoping uh, that uh, in as safe a manner as possible that uh, when the time comes that we'll be able to reopen and, and provide these uh, these shows to the public again. Fantastic stuff. Thank you so much, Professor Andrew Chen there from the Viz Planetarium, uh, talking to us about uh, that rare solstice that occurred, or solar eclipse, uh, sorry, that uh, occurred a little bit earlier on. Not the solstice.